afternoon, everyone, and Merry Christmas. This is Randy from ProfitBot Pro. Today is December 26th, 2018. I'm going to show you in this video, uh, from start to finish, how to download, configure, and run ProfitBot Pro uh, automated mining software. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to one of my machines. <clears throat> And we're going to close everything. Okay. I'm going to rename this folder. Okay, so we're going to go to my Git repo and download ProfitBot Pro, the newest version. <clears throat> You'll notice that uh, Chrome is going to give us a warning that the file uh, may be dangerous. Um, as with any mining software, uh, it will provide a false positive to the various antivirus mechanisms. So in this case, you can just ignore it. Okay, close this. We'll go to downloads. This is the one actually we just downloaded. I'm going to delete this and rename this. So we're consistent all the way through with using a fresh file. Okay, so I'm going to extract everything. I'm going to cut and paste this folder to the root of C. Um, out of the box, I have it set up that if you paste this folder to the root of C, um, then you don't have to change the path. So you could just run this. And as you can see, out of the box, without changing anything, um, it detected uh, the CPU, the video cards, and it's running. Um, you know, if this were uh, my computer, obviously, because I'm using all of my wallets, I wouldn't change anything. I would just let this thing go from here on forward. Um, but uh, you don't want to mine for me. You want to mine for yourself. So we're going to go in and we're going to change those things. But I just wanted to show you real quick that, um, you know, you can download this thing and run it. And it should just run without changing anything. Um, when I write my software, I have eight uh, systems that I test everything on so I pretend like it's a brand new download I you know pretend like I'm doing an update whatever um, speaking of updates I want to show you that process real quick too so I'm going to downgrade this to a version older and close this out we're going to run ProfitBot Pro you see right here it detected that we were using an older version um, this is the new version it's going to download the update it's going to create a lock file so that um, uh, it can't mine until the update process is completed. Um, so we'll just scroll back up here and click here so we can see everything that happened. So it downloaded a new version. Um, it restarted uh, afterwards and um, started mining. So some of the things it did during the update, um, it noticed that there was a mismatch between the version in the coin settings as well as the settings, because if you remember, I just changed the one. Um, it made sure that it um, moved all of your settings from your old files to the new files, and then it fixed the versions on everything so that they're the correct version. And you'll notice that um, that's 12.20 now, but these all say 12.19, so you can see that it downloaded all the new files, um, just like it was supposed to. Uh, one thing that I do not provide in the update mechanism is the executables. If you want um, everything that's in these folders, you're going to have to either go to um, the repo for these folks or download the entire package from me. Uh, the choice is up to you. Okay, so let's go to coin settings and start there. <clears throat> this is a list of all the coins that I mine along with all the pools that I use and my wallet configurations. Um, you don't have to keep any of this stuff. So let's make this thing simple and let's get rid of all this. And we're only going to focus on LMO and ARMS right now. Um, so anything that's in this section right here is what you would like to profit mine. And then if you want to be in static mode, meaning you want to just mine the same coin perpetually, um, you would put that right here as your default coin. Um, so you notice there's no comma at the end of arms. However, if we were going to add something else, you put in another set of quotes and you know, let's say Stellite, right? Um, 
All right, so I'm going to remove that. You see how that works. And then the same goes down here. So um, there's a comma before the next one, and then the one at the very end does not have the comma. Uh, what you can do if you're getting uh, errors like the red text scrolling up your screen, it usually means there's a formatting error in the JSON files. So I'm going to highlight everything and then go over to JSON lint. We'll paste this in here. I don't think I grabbed it. There we go. And we'll just validate the JSON. So if it's good, um, it'll be green. Let's say you left a comma out. All right, let's grab all this again. Validate it. See, we're missing a comma right here. Um, so if you're getting errors, you can just paste something like this in and then uh, test it from there. All right. I'm going to close this and not save what I just did. So let's open that up again. Okay. So we're just going to focus on these two coins here. Again, um, you can mine whatever you'd like. You just create your personal mining list right here. Anything that's in this section needs to have a corresponding... Um, pool config and wallet config. So both of those are contained in this section right here. All right, so I'm just gonna leave all this stuff here. Um, you can feel free to delete these, change them, whatever. Um, just make sure that you adhere to the formatting. So we're just gonna, like I said, focus on LMO and ARMS. So I'm gonna restart the miner real quick just to make sure everything still works, and it does. You can see over here we're mining. So I'm just gonna close that out. Okay. <clears throat> settings.conf. So here's the path. Remember I put it in the root of C. Um, we use two slashes here, not one. If you use one, you're going to have issues. Um, so make sure that there's two. I also highly suggest that you keep things simple and keep this path, um, the default path. Um, if you start adding more folders recursively, uh, you could forget a slash, you could have, you know, extra chances of putting in a typo, whatever. Just keep it simple. Um, static mode. This is yes or no. If static mode is yes, then you're only going to mine this coin. It's not going to switch. If static mode is no, then you're going to mine this list right here, which means you're going to be in profit mining mode. <clears throat> update check is where it went out and said, hey, there's an update. Uh, you can keep that yes or no and then allow automatic updates. Um, that's allowing the updates to actually be pulled down. And again, you can change, if you'd like to keep these no, and just go to my site periodically and see if there's an update and then install it manually, you can certainly do that. Or um, you can you can let uh, my software download and update itself. Okay, so we go to uh, a fresh um, ProfitBot Pro calc page. Nothing's been changed here. Let's say I happen to know this machine does 2,200 hash a second on kryptonite. Um, I check the calibrate button, recalibrates the rest of the boxes based off of the 2,200. I'm going to click on API. I'm going to grab everything from www all the way over to the right. And I'm going to copy that. We're going to paste that information right here. Now you want to do this for each of your rigs. This number needs to be different. This key needs to be different for each of your rigs. And the reason why it needs to be different is when this does a query, it caches the query to a temp table. And it, it's possible two rigs could query at the same time. If you're using the same session key, it could pollute the table. So um, pick different ones. If you want, just add a number to the end of it or a letter, whatever. Um, okay. So I'm going to put this back to where it was. Um, so now we have our custom API query set up. You can change this. Um, you can change the hash rates there. If you just want to do this super easy, just change everything here. Calculate, API, copy, paste. Um, if you feel like just changing things in here, I guess you could. Um, just keep in mind, if you fat finger something, you're going to run into problems. All right, enable logging. So. When you first run ProfitBot Pro, it creates some folders, previous version, backups, and a folder for the name of the computer. So the logs are stored inside this folder. Every day has its own log. 
You see log age right here is seven. That means that you're only going to keep seven days worth of logs. Feel free to adjust that. If you don't want to use the log system at all, you can just change that to no. Uh, delete CPU text. So when you start uh, any miner, it goes out and it looks to see how many threads you have available. And then it will choose the number of threads that it feels um, is most uh, suitable for your system. Um, and let's say you happen to be mining something that's light, that uses all the threads, but then the next thing you switch to is heavy. If it's set to use all the threads still, you're most likely going to run into performance issues. So um, if you don't care about that and you want it to delete the CPU text and recreate it each time so that the miner can determine the number of threads on its own, you'd change this to yes. If you want to configure it yourself, you would leave this as no. So the very first time, you run the program, it creates a CPU text file, and then you can go in here and add or remove threads um, as you see fit. Okay, let's go back to, here we go. Okay, mining timer. So, you know, most pools want you to stay in there for a while and you get more benefit the longer you're in a pool. So this is the number of minutes that you're going to mine a specific coin until it, until it changes to the next most profitable coin. Um, I would highly suggest leaving this at 20 or increasing it. Um, if you're switching around too much between pools, I don't really see you getting that much benefit out of it. Um, sleep seconds. So when the uh, miner is running, <clears throat> it will tell you how much uh, it's... Uh, estimating that you're going to make with respect to rewards or profit. It's also going to tell you um, how many accepts you have, uh, what your hash rate is. Um, sleep seconds is in between the time it takes to refresh that data. Um, I wouldn't go any lower than 60 seconds, which is a minute. Um, you could even increase that uh, much higher if you want. Um, up to you. But if you lower that number, it gets too chatty. The logs fill up much faster. Um, it puts a greater strain on my server, uh, so on and so forth. Really unnecessary. Uh, voice. So I have a computer-generated voice that tells you when you are switching coins. You can leave that on or you can turn it off. Entirely up to you. Stop worker delay. Um, let's say you're mining a coin right now and the system determines another coin is more profitable. It's going to shut down the worker, the, the mining software, and then it's going to bring up a new one. Um, the amount of time from the time it says stop mining uh, until the window closes can vary based on the age of um, the system. Uh, you know, if you have buggy or uh, quirky video cards that maybe take longer to power down, you might want to increase this time. So uh, I have a system that I have uh, that's set to 10. Most of my cards and motherboards are newer, so I can leave that around 5. Uh, enable coin data um, is where it shows uh, the profit, the hash rate, the rewards, um, you know, all that stuff that it's pulling from the website. You can leave that on or you can turn that off, entirely up to you. Um, this system here, we're going to mine the CPU, so we'll keep this yes. It has AMD cards, we'll keep this yes. It does not have NVIDIA cards, so I'm going to set that to no. Uh, rig name, so by default it uses the name of your computer. I just happened to rename all my computers to the names that I, the naming convention that I wanted, but you know, maybe your computer is something different. Maybe it's your real name and you don't want to advertise that to the world. Well, you can put something in here, something else in here. So I'll just do Randy test. Okay. So now um, when we go out to the mining monitor, the cloud mining monitor, um, it will show up as Randy test and it will no longer show up as MR04. Okay. So speaking of which, let's close this window and we're going to go to the monitor. So this is our first time coming here. It recognizes this and it's going to generate an API key for us. So let's click on that to lock it in and then we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it right here. Okay. What's going to happen is when we start the miner up, this key is going to register with the website and this worker is going to show up down here and then we're going to start 
um, building a history of what we mine over a 24 hour period. And I'll show you once we get that thing running. Matter of fact, I'm going to go over these. I'm going to start this now so it registers with the site and gets going while I explain these last couple. Okay, um, what are we using? JCE. Okay, we're just going to mine CPU for right now. Um, I need to go in there and change that. Okay, so clear SRB cache. So if you're using AMD GPU SRB miner, um, there's a chance that sometimes your uh, cache, it's uh, when you start the miner up for the first time, uh, it will compile some files for a specific algorithm. Uh, sometimes I've run into an issue where those files become corrupt. Maybe the miner crashed, maybe the whole system crashed, whatever. And I wake up the next morning and I find that the thing was just stopping and starting all night long. So I added a feature called clear SRB cache that will go into that folder, uh, which will appear here in, in this list uh, once we run it for the first time. Um, and it'll go into that folder and it'll delete the cache file. So every time it starts the miner over again, it will recompile brand new ones. Completely up to you. If you have a stable system, you can set this to no. If you're running into that problem, you can change it to yes. So if we use JCE miner, um, either the uh, CPU only or the CPU GPU miner, um, this section here addresses the number of threads that you'd like to use. So as you can see, we're only using two threads, thread zero and thread one. So this computer is an i7. I happen to know with JCE Miner that I only want to use half of the threads. Um, it's a four core, but with hyper threading, there's eight threads total. If I use eight threads, I'll actually get much lower performance than if I use four, and the same if I were to use six. So we're going to change that. Um, actually, do we have? No, nope, that's okay. That is completely okay. I needed to let it register twice. First time it creates everything, and then the second time it can actually start establishing an average. So if there's just one, it's a bug that I have to work out on the website. Um, it will uh, it will register an error. So I should have that fixed um, by the end of the day today. Okay. So uh, like I said before, we're using uh, JCE. We should now see four threads, and we are. Good. Okay, we're going to let this update another time. There we go. Okay. Like I said, it needed to uh, talk twice to the server. Um, if And that only does it if you have one machine. So the very first machine will need to talk twice um, before everything works. All subsequent machines only need to ping at once. Okay, so we're seeing here Randy test. Um, the computer last checked in in UTC at um, 1834. Uh, we're currently mining LMO. We're in profit mode. This is the ELGO. Um, this is the miner that we're using, our hash rate, the number of accepts, rejects, what our expected 24-hour reward is, and then um, what our expected uh, profit is in USD. And you'll notice down here those numbers jive. So this is sending that information to the website. Okay, so let's mix this up. We've just gotten this to work with uh, LMO and using the CPU only JCE miner. So let's do this. I'm going to find LMO. Okay, so let's change this. Let's go with now JCE's CPU GPU miner. So you see I'm grabbing everything before the period and I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste that right here. So when we spin this up now, it's going to come up with the CPU GPU miner. And I messed something up here. Ah, an extra four. See, even I can make a mistake. Okay, and now everything's working. So there you go, four threads and two GPUs, each with two threads each. This thing will automatically uh, dual thread everything. Simple, right? Okay, let's do this. Let's change this to XMR stack. Oops, there we go. 
run profitbot pro again. So as you can see, we're now using XMR stack, four threads, and dual threaded AMD. Just give this a second. There we go. Okay, 4,500 hash a second. <clears throat> so if we let this thing check in again, which will take, if you remember, 60 seconds, then we should see that show up here. You can see where it switched to GPU there from the last run. Should be pretty soon. Any second now. Dear God, sometimes 60 seconds seems to take forever. <clears throat> there we go. So now you can see XMR stack. All right, no need to show you guys that again. You get it. Okay. And now we're going to switch to SRB. Get that K out of there, almost did it again. And we'll run this again. So you can see, configured to mine LMO, checking our, um, is SRB installed? Now that's interesting, that is a bug. Ah, uh, that cache folder didn't exist the first run, but it does now. See, SRB cache will not be purged because we had it set to no, um, and we didn't get that error because it created the cache folder after my software checked for it. So something I just need to move around in my software. All right, so as you can see, um, all we've done so far uh, out of the box is really change these in this entire file and then for LMO um, we just changed the software so we've just moved a bunch of stuff around and we've yet to run into any issues other than issues that I've created for myself okay let's close this oh we probably should have seen this up here too yep SRB all right, there you go. So, you know, you scroll down here, you see, um, you know, what your uh, estimated profit was going to be uh, over a period of time, your hash rate. Um, if I put in my own systems, so let's go down here, you can see what I'm doing. So, I, you know, I've got a couple of machines off just because I'm doing some demonstrations right now. Um, so, you know, when you have multiple machines, it'll show you how many are registered, how many are active on that. Again, last scene, you can see with uh, missing two machines. Um, so I'm doing 34 uh, kilohash, and I should be bringing in about nine bucks a day. Well, it cost me about ten dollars a day to power everything, so I'm I'm actually in the suck right now. So these are the things that I've mined over the last 24 hours. These are the algos that I've mined over the last 24 hours. Um, you know what each machine um, is expected to do. So I've got all kinds of neat graphs and stuff for you. Okay, so let's go over this for a second. These are pretty self-explanatory. The symbol, the software, um, we've just played with those. Static param, um, you'll see on the website, I've got those right here. So if you go to some pool, let me just find a pool. And then you go to the getting started section, you'll see um, they'll have like address plus diff, and that's what I mean by that. Um, I had that open in a different window. So 
wallet plus diff, the static param is one. If it's a period, it's two. These are all the different software options that we talked about. Um, the API, if you choose to adjust it yourself, I have an API cheat sheet. So here's all the options for that. That's all this stuff that's up in here. Um, <clears throat> so for the SRB config file, if you look inside the SRB folder and in config, that's where I'm getting these from. So for example, this is a Haven, pro uh, Haven protocol. So we would use the config for haven.txt, which can, can be found down here. I didn't create any of these. I tried to uh, write my software so it uses the stock stuff from some of these um, people who dev uh, develop mining software. That way, when they make updates, my stuff just magically works. I don't have to hard code a bunch of stuff. Um, OK, so that's where we get that for SRB. This JCE minor variation is what comes from these right here. And if you uh, look in the folders that come with my software, I left these files in there, um, some of the help files and stuff. So, you know, um, here's something that I didn't realize when I first looked at it. See how there's two Kryptonite version 7, April 2018s. This one is actually CN7 normal. This one's CN7 light. Um, so for some of these, I think this is regular, this is light. Um, you might have to play around, but um, I, you know, I included all of the information that I think that you would need um, on this page right here. So we've covered everything in here. Um, we've covered the stuff here. Um, algorithm, of course, the pool, the port, the wallet. Um, if they require a payment ID, put it in here. If not, don't worry about it. Um, this section right here. So you can call these whatever you want. Um, what I like to do, uh, let me show you. Yeah, I can do it on this one. Let me go back to the old folder. So you see how I have all the different files and my config file. Um, I'll show you that too. So see if it's uh, light, I use a light text file. If it's uh, CN8, I use a CN8 file. Uh, the reason why I do that is, is I actually go in and I adjust these myself. Um, I adjust the intensity, I, you know, I, I adjust some other stuff. I like to completely customize each of my AMD files for whatever I'm mining. Uh, XMR stack is the only one that I do my own custom configs on. Um, SRB and JCE, I just go with their default stuff because it's actually much faster than XMR stacks is uh, with SRB and JCE right out of the box. Uh, an example of that is I have uh, a system that gets 800 hash more with SRB than it did with XMR stack while still mining the CPU. So with SRB, it's only using the GPUs and it's 800 hash a second faster than XMR was with the CPUs. Um, so anyway, I believe that I have walked through everything. If there's any questions, um, please reach out to me. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.